the three days of looking at nothing but dust, sand and leaves, trying to convince you that we know what we're doing, we have finally found that mating pair and you are just about to witness something, let's see. <laughs> no, she's not interested. No, there's still, there we go. Obviously behind all the bushes for you. So you can see now, let's see what she does now. Not a very frantic mating. She's rolling on her back there. That's a sure sign that it was a successful copulation. Busy yawning. One of the Birmingham boys and it looks like one of the Nkuhuma lioness. Isn't that wonderful to see? Not the actual act, but the fact that these two have come together again after all these months and months of strife. He's now just sort of asserting his asserting his dominance not over her but literally just over the area he'll take some time now to just looking for a place here through the bushes where it's going to give us a better view of one or the other how's that hat yeah that's a little bit better So even though males are associated to prides and would seem dominant over those prides because they steal kills from the female, they're well known to the females, they don't look, they don't, females don't react aggressive, aggressively to what we call pride males, they definitely are not the same thing. They, 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 they can hardly even be called a proper pride when you consider males and females together. Females tolerate the dominant males in an area around them because of the fact that they are the strongest males in the areas that they live in at that particular time and that gives their babies the best chance of survival. So the females are actually the custodians of the strength of a pride, of, this, of, of the genetic strength of lions in a, in a particular area and are actually the treasure troves. Male lions compete with one another over an area that has female lions in and the strongest males are the ones that make it to maturity and the strongest males are the ones that have mating rights with the females. It's not necessarily the same thing. In other words, being the custodians of lion strength as a whole and being the strongest male in an area is not necessarily... Uh, they're not the same game plan. They're two different game plans. And once you're looking at him, he's in attendance with this female, and you could see after he finished mating, he first walked one way and yawned and stood up nice and straight and looked the other way and yawned and was bristling. That's just him showing anyone or anything in the area how big and how dominant he actually is, and her. Females can actually hold off ovulating for almost a hundred days where they will give any male in an area the opportunity to try and usurp the male that's in attendance with her and if she doesn't feel that this male is up to the task they will absolutely withhold ovulating until the last possible minute. They can withhold it up to a hundred days then their bodies will have to ovulate and then whatever dominant male is in the area will have a chance of mating with those females. And in lion poor areas, in, in areas where lions have been hunted or persecuted, it's not uncommon for inbreeding to happen. As a species, the females will know that to keep lion numbers there, to keep, to keep the, the, the species going in an area, they will sometimes have to inbreed. It does happen often, in actual fact, leopard and lion populations. And they're quite resilient to that, except for the fact that after some time you will start getting 
problems with size, health problems, and in fringe areas, in areas where lions live in very diff under very difficult conditions, it's not uncommon to find lions with no manes, females with manes, much smaller cats, abnormally large cats, just bizarre throwings around of stuff. And it's all because of this mixings. Cricket National Park, we don't have that, luckily. All the, all the game reserves in, the, in, in South Africa are fenced off from local populations and so you don't have this intense competition between people and animals. So you, you have very healthy populations of both people and animals living literally right next door to one another. I mean, our local village here is no more than, I would say, three kilometers, four kilometers from where our camp is and a completely different system to what we live in right here. Isn't that amazing though, hey? Aubrey, you've just asked me if this is the female with suckle marks and you know as she rolled over onto her back there I tried to see if she had any prominent suckle marks. Um, I'm going to say that I didn't see anything prominent and that's the second part of your question. What do they look like? Suckle marks look exactly um, like circles around the nipple where the hair has been flattened with the saliva of the saliva and the, the, the excess milk that cubs leave behind after they've been suckling on those nipples. So quite often in the early stages it's just flattened hair and as soon as the, the, the cubs have their teeth, their little milk teeth and start to lick that area to um, force mom basically into feeding them, those patches of skin become quite bare and can even start to bleed and look quite sore. In this particular case I haven't seen this female yet, although I must be honest, I just had a very, very brief uh, visual of that, and I'm sure as we spend a little bit more time here, we should see another mating occur, we should see her roll onto her back again, and it will give us another opportunity to have a look at that. Now, mating occurs Mating occurs, um, can occur at any time during the year. Cubs are born at any time during the year. There seems to be a flush of cubs, though, towards the end of the year, sort of Christmas time. Um, although females will give birth at any time, and it's, it's literally dictated to by how the pride dynamics are rather than the seasons. Um, but there is a slight increase in cub births. Uh, in an area in summertime, I think it sort of coincides with the abundance of game that give birth at the same time. A lot of babies around, moms have got a lot of food, and so it's easier just to have more cubs survive, more cubs get born during that time. Now, um, this mating will last for about five days. I think this is probably about day three or four. We'll see what the frequency of mating is. As it reaches its height, a male line will mate with a female probably every three to five minutes for about 24 hours or so, and then it'll start to taper off again to a, about once. There, here he goes again. So this is probably now every well, five to ten minutes or so. So I'd say this is... Where is she going? She grabbed her tail in his mouth to stop her. Oh, she's trotting away. She actually does look like she's got suckle marks, I'll be honest with you. She absolutely looks like she's got suckle marks, so... He's covering her again.